yes jagdish yeah. you can make it in presentation mode share it yes yes good evening everybody thank you little bit of little bit of delayed in uh, joining uh, this elite uh, speakers with a good topic to come in so we have given the topic of you know the pcl aversion the fracture fixation it's a video presentation and uh, this i've got a it's my own uh, technique called is a mohandas jackson technique which i'll be talking now so this pcl uh, avulsion which daily we come across in our you know day to day practice but it is not so un it is not not so common but when we get in a, a pcl avulsion we should know what are the methods of fixation and how to go about it a, a good fixation which is so when we get an x ray uh, usually we immediately we jump into a, a ct scan to know whether uh, what is the uh, amount of a displacement is present in the uh, in avulsion and what are the type of uh, combination is it present or not and that's most important to know it about it and why do you fix it okay and when usually when you see that you know the literature the special it serves as a, a primary restraint to the posterior translation of the tibia of the femur so in this which is important so that you know the second restraint to internal rotation external rotation process needs to be acted on to the knee so if you leave it what will happens is the refusion knee which you know so gradually as the day progresses will lead to a the cartilage especially the uh, femoral and uh, uh, patellar femoral uh, degenerative changes can happen very early so treatment options lies down here we have the two options whether you should go for an open procedure or an arthroscopic procedure of course an open procedure have got in uh, to do uh, when the when the bone is really chunk a piece a good piece of a bone to uh, do it and arthroscopic fixation is a different one which you know which helps in a good uh, early rehabilitation and then come the patient which are less morbidity and how do we go about it this to decide about it in x ray ct scan mri to know whether there is any associated injury is present or not and when you see this if you see a uh, an x ray the commonly this is the one which shows that so that means that the avulsion should be more than 10 mm then only you can see this type of uh, pictures in an x ray in the lateral view and if you don't see that then you have to think that you know that is not an it is an undisplaced one if you look at the, the classification we have a type 1 to type 3 depending upon the amount of displacement from its attachments you mean that it is attached to usually so 10 mm from the tibial the joint articular surface so if it is above that is if it is coming to the articular surface means that it is should be 10 mm displaced above so 3d reconstruction helps us in uh, planning the, the the procedure how it is because many of the comminuted fracture fragments cannot be treated open by putting a screws or uh, cancel screws so mri of course is important i said to know the associated injuries which we can treat it at the same time when we are doing it and the attachments of the pcl so this is how it looks like that but the pcl as such the ligament as such is intact so we do not be worried about it we can definitely go for a directly pcl reattaching so two classical procedures are there which uh, both from the abort and carpenter and then the uh, burks and shaffer it has got its own uh, usefulness and you no know, disadvantages which i am not going to tell and this is how usually the the cancel is with the screws fixation is being done with an open procedure and demanding the to protect the neurovascular structure is really high in terms of you know you do an open procedures and when you do a this arthroscopic fixations uh when you are planning it you know the when you do your plan this is most important the immediately or you know you need to wait for some time but when you do it and immediately there will be a lot of uh, uh you know the extravasation of the fluid can happen uh, into the the calf area so that your compartment can raise about it so you have to wait for a, a time it'll at least a week so that the case of the soft tissues closes and your extravasation of the fluid will not be that much problematic so there are a lot of techniques has been described if you see the literature through the arthroscopy somebody they have tried with the cannulated tried with the kvs staples circlage wise and the transosseous sutures so this is how it looks like you know the when it is fixed with the kvs and definitely it will be a little bit of worry suppose if it migrates it can injure the posterior structures very easily 
And this is we commonly seen before previously, they have used the endo button and other types of all the buttons available, which can be used, which have used it before to fix the avulse fragments from here. And of course, endo button offers sufficient compression, but the thing is, when you get into the, the, the combination part, so it will not be take out the complete the combination part to its uh, bed. And a few people have also done using the, the tritrope technique, which directly through the, uh, the, the bone. But only thing is the problem is that the, it can splinter sometimes when you're doing it through the uh, bone fragment. So the so many literatures have shown that the arthroscopic fixation is always better than the uh, open procedure. Here, what I do, I'm just showing my technique of arthroscopic reattachment of a posterior cruciate ligament, and which is by using an ABS button and tightrope, and this has been published in the journal of arthroscopy. Surgical technique, when I keep the patient in a supine position, and of course, and use the tourniquet, and here I use the portals, the posterior medial two portals, apart from the standard anterolateral portals. The two posterior portals are the superior and inferior portals. So this is the, the published one, the article. Yeah, sorry. So this is how you see, you see it when we put our scope inside. So this is a lax. The lax is a, of an ACL, is an indirect sign of how the uh, the ACL, the, the PCL can be detached from its attachment. How do we go about it? So normally if you do, if we draw a line along the joint, so approximately two fingers back, that is above the joint, I will take, uh, and in the medial, that will be my initiation of the portals for the posterior medial portal. From here, I take it, so that comes exactly to the level of the joint, and then I'll go above. So, there are other type of portals also were available like the posterior lateral portals, but the viewing from the new posterior medial portal, that is from the superior portals has got its own advantage, wherein you are close to it and the visualization of complete of the anatomies, you can see about it. I'm going to show it now. If you see here, if you keep a little bit in a dark, dark light, light, so you can see the fragment, you can see the light which is there. And that will be the entry point, you know, where the, if the, the people, if you want to take uh, the portals in the beginning, beginners can be helpful. So when you make the light dark, you can enter it very easily. And then you go about it a little bit above to take the second portal. And this portal has to be there exactly at the level of the joint. If you're going very close to the joint, you know, maneuvering the, maneuvering the instruments will be a little bit of difficult. So going there above that, that will be my superior portal, where my, I will be viewing from there, and down will be my working portal. So a case should be taken that when you are putting it, the, uh, the knife, you should tie it always. So because leaving the, the uh, without tying it, you know, can cause sometimes, you know, the break of the, uh, this knife within that. So, just a minute, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry, this is the one which a little bit of you know, problem was there. I'm re-showing it. So that is the, the portal. This portal has to be along the joint line, a little bit above. If it is very too close to the joint, you know, maneuvering of the instrument will be difficult. And second portal, there should be some gap between so that when you put inside, we will have, a, have enough space to view from there, from the top. You know that, you know that viewing from the top is always, it gives a better picture. It's called a bird's eye view. Imagine if it is very close, eh, definitely there'll be a little problem. And you should not go back, or no, you should not go on almost to the middle, midline here. 
and once i have done that you know i have got enough space up for my the scope to go inside i'll put my missing rod and then exchange the sheath to inside and then i switch on my whole the working portal from anterior to the medial portal so from here on my almost working portal will be start from there if i want to enter posteriorly so here is the one which we first we debride everything the anteriorly until you get into the posterior part so this is you should prepare first so that you are the posterior capsule you should not break it or you should not get on to it always lie close to the bone so that you you get enter in the capsule and once if you done that then you are switching into the the posterior medial portal here you should always lie close to the the pcl and to the bone because in the very in the in the beginning in in, in the in acute acute cases there will be adhesions which you will not be able to go in so once if you are done that i am doing the portal from the post superior portal you can see that this is the avulsion fragment avulsed one and there is soft tissue attached when i see that there will be a little bit of movement of it's happening so that shows that you know that is a piece of attached and once if the soft tissue is a little bit of released with the rf radio frequency subtlesis we can see that there is a gap between the bone between the bed and the avulsed fragment so this is the avulsed fragment which i wanted to reattach so when i lift it i take out all the soft tissue attachment i will come to the bed so preparation of the bed is very important so soft tissues all of the has to be taken out with the either you can use a shaver or i always use the rf so that i will get a bed which is really you no know, bleedy one and healthy and also the similarly i will take the soft tissue attached near to its the avulsed fragment and make sure that i will release the attachment of the soft tissues to get free movements of the avulsed fragment easily so that i can bring down the whatever the avulsed fragment to its attachment to the bed so this is so i can make sure that you know it is sits to its bed properly in its place so once i make sure that that fragment is going to fit properly i will take the pcl jig the standard pcl jig and about 12 or uh, 12 mm from the down from the joint line i'll bring it to make sure that it is at the bed so here i'll use the first the bath pin and then i'll switch on to the 4.5 mm drill bit and once i have done that i will take the needle this is a simple uh, spinal needle as i am taking it i'll put it to the bed which i have done it prepared so use the pds or the yeah uh, the pds wire to take it to the where i have drilled it and take back the needle which are there so next i will take it through the this is the one which is this is not coming through the bone this is coming through the interface between the ligament and the bone so once if i am damn sure that it is i am in the middle of the ligament and between the bone and ligament interface i will take this as a point for the uh, my insertion same pds is passed through here so one pds is coming through the tibia that is at the foot bed and another pds is coming through the the pcl attachment of the to the fragment so i will take the one free end from the and which is coming from the anterior and the another one which is which has come through the tibia here i am passing through the either fiber wire you can pass or or you can ethibot so i always prefer the fiber wire to so that because it is a little bit stronger and this is the one which is coming from the anterior so i take this and re and shuttle it and i will shuttle it so that it is coming through the the pcl fragment so whatever i have taken the the fiber wire now it will be coming through the the pcl attached one so i have got the now the attached one coming through the the pcl so from the tibia i have reshuttled it so that it will coming through the pcl avulsed fragment now it is a time for me to always i will do and i will always pre lengthen my uh, the tight rope so you you do know that the tight rope can be lengthened once i have pre lengthened the tight rope which i will be using it right now 
to pass it. So I'm passing it from anterior. And then it is coming now, it will come through the PCL attached, which has come through the ligament one. So my shuttle, the, the shuttle the fiber wire will take the long thread of the tight rope from anterior to the medial portal. That is, I'm getting into the inferior, the inferior medial portal. I'm doing from the superior portal. This has come through the inferior portal. So one which is with the button is lying anteriorly in the tibia. And one the free of the tight rope is come to the here is the one which the free end has come to the posterior medial portal. I take the ABS button, I'll put it across the ABS button and try to cinch it anteriorly so that I will shorten the working length. I'll shorten the working length and then make sure that. I will take it with through the kingfisher or any grasper and once I start cinching anteriorly and once I start cinching anteriorly it passes and here you can make sure that wherever you wanted the, a, the, the ABS button to place it you can place it and the usefulness of this ABN button is it has got a wide area and when you pull it it takes a good fixation and there is no chance for you to for the button or something to slip off or to break because it has got a wide area of the grip to, to keep it to keep it and i'll give an anterior drawer test and make the cinch from the anteriorly so the button of the, the tight rope lies in the anteriorly and the abs button which is taken from the posterior is in the about uh, behind the the pcl fragment you can see that the post, this is the post open uh, x ray, how the, the fragment is very well reduced and well. And this lies on looks like you know it is lying in you know, a free loop floating, but you know that this is completely inside and there is it, it can never breach to the cortex of the, uh, the, the, the uh, avulsion fragment. So, to conclude that, the optimal treatment of the PCL, TPL side, there are a lot of uh, varieties of surgical options are available, where, whereas here, which I've used is the uh, the one button which is the behind that which can be very really useful if there's a comminution bone is there of course even when there's a large chunk of the bone is available the fixation is very much stronger and there is no chance of the any the the small the button can which is slip off in the usually in the regular technique which can never happen here and there are definitely we need a long term study to follow up how this the fixation helps in but definitely there is no need of any for the implant to be removed here in after a little later. Thank you. Mm -hmm.